Skylights are a great way to bring natural light into a dark room. We can place a skylight in Chief Architect by going to Build, Roof, and then click on Skylight. As we move the cursor over the roof, we can see the preview of the skylight as it adjusts to the different roof pitches. The default configuration for a skylight is a 24 inch square, but we can see that when we have the cursor over the roof, we are getting a more rectangular shape rather than a square. This is because we are seeing a projected size that is based on the pitch of the roof. Notice the difference as we move the cursor from the 10 and 12 roof to the 3 and 12 roof of the porch. The 3 and 12 roof's shallower pitch causes the skylight to project more of a square shape in plan view than the steeper 10 and 12 pitch. Since the plan view is like a satellite looking directly down on the project, we will not see the actual dimensions of the skylight when it is placed in a pitched roof. When we have determined a location, we can place the skylight using two different techniques. The first option is to simply click where we want and it will place the default 24 inch square skylight centered on where we clicked. The second option is to click and drag. This allows us to drag diagonally to create the size of skylight appropriate for the space. Once we have a skylight, simply click on it and then click the Open Object tool on the Edit toolbar to view its specification. On the general panel, we can specify the shape of the skylight as well as its exact dimensions. This is where we can input the dimensions of the skylight provided by the manufacturer. We have this lock option for top, center, and bottom. Depending on what location we lock, when we change the size of the skylight, that location won't move, but other parts of the skylight will to accommodate the new size. This is useful if you have precisely placed the skylight, like if we've already set the bottom of the skylight to be a specific distance from the wall, and we'd like to maintain that distance but also make the skylight longer. The frame of the skylight can be adjusted with these settings here. And if you want to represent the skylight as just a polyline shape rather than show the frame, we can uncheck this display and plan box. Next, we have options for the hole that is created. We can choose to have plumb or square cut sides, or with this last one, we can have the bottom edge plumb and the top edge square. By default, the hole that is created in the ceiling is generated automatically. We can change this to manually edit ceiling hole polyline if we want to manually change the shape of the ceiling hole without changing the dimensions of the skylight object. This last checkbox tells the software to connect the skylight to the ceiling hole automatically. If we uncheck this box, we'll have to create the sides of the shaft manually. On the line style panel, we can control the layer, color, line style, and line weight of the skylight. Notice that the skylight is on the roof's openings layer. If we have a project that has dormers as well as skylights, we might decide to create a new layer for skylights so that we can hide the dormer holes while still showing our skylights. Moving to the materials panel, we can specify the material for the various components of our skylight. We can control the display of the skylight's label on the label panel, including choosing a different layer for the label. On the object information panel, we can specify some data about the skylight that we might want to identify in schedules and materials lists, like the manufacturer. On the schedule panel, we can choose if the skylight is included in a schedule and what type of schedule. By default, the skylight is included in the window schedule category. When we select the skylight in plan view, Notice that we don't have as many edit handles as we do when selecting other objects. Also, if temporary dimensions are displayed, we cannot use the temporary dimension to change the size of the skylight. We can still move the skylight with dimensions, but not resize. To change the size of the skylight, we can do so in the specification dialog, or we can open the skylight detail. With the skylight selected, click the Edit Skylight Shape tool on the Edit toolbar. This opens a detail view that shows the skylight. The bottom of the screen is the bottom of the skylight, the low side of the roof pitch. The top of the screen is upslope. 
We are looking directly perpendicular to the pitch of the roof, so we are not seeing a projected size, but the actual size. We can use the CAD tools here to customize the shape of the skylight. For example, we can use the break tool to break this top edge and drag it up. When we close out of the skylight detail, it prompts to save the changes to the skylight, and now we see our changes in the plan view. If we find that we are making the same type of edits to skylights over and over again, we can set up our defaults to have these settings preset for us in our skylight defaults. Go to Edit, Default Settings, and double click on Skylight to open the skylight defaults. If we find that our projects require solar tubes more often than rectangular skylights, we can set our default shape to be circle. Or if we want the skylights to show up as a dashed line instead of showing the frame, we can turn off Display and Plan View, and on the Line Style panel, switch to a dashed line. If we make these changes in our template plan, any new plans we create will have these set up automatically for us, and we won't have to think about it for future plans. We hope this tutorial on Skylights has illuminated the capabilities of this versatile tool. Additional information about Skylights can be found by clicking the question mark on the toolbar and searching for Skylight in the program's help. Thank you for watching.